Okay, good morning. Today, uh, let us look at the book of Mark. The book of Mark, chapter 4. Verse from 35 to 41. Mark chapter 4, verse from 35 to 41. I read. Jesus come just home. Verse 35. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the storm, a stern, asleep on the cushion. And they wake him and uh, said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. He said to them, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Amen. Yeah, this is the, um, okay, this is very, uh, it's giving us important teaching in our lives. Mm -hmm. Actually, it was uh, when Jesus was going to the other side of the lake, uh, after he was teaching the, uh, many people uh, about the kingdom of God. So after he was teaching, then uh, in the evening, he wanted to go across the uh, the the lake, Galilee Lake. So the lake was very big. To across the lake to the other side, it was like uh, 12 kilometers from the western to the east, east part. Yeah. So anyway, uh, so Jesus is, uh, we believe Jesus is the son of God. And he has the authority and power to even do many miracles, right? So even this, this part, it is the miracle of Jesus to calm the water, calm the waves and water. But then we should not just look at it, uh, which was happening long time ago once, uh, but then we want to look at it uh, look at the spiritual meaning. What is this teaching to us? Yeah. Because you know, every story in the Bible, it's giving to me the lesson. That is the purpose. Yeah. So what this is teaching to me in my life, life of faith. Yeah. So they were going to the other side of the lake uh, with Jesus. But then there was a great storm, uh, great wind and waves were there uh, in the water. So what does it mean? Even though we are li living with faith, uh, we are in God, but then it does not mean that there will be no, uh, no difficulties, no problems, it's not. Uh, there is uh, things happening. There are things happening. Sudden uh, disaster can come to us. Um, 
some yeah, some certain extent it can come to our lives. Uh, so we can feel ah we are dying, you know. What's happening to me? Why? You know. So ah uh, yesterday I was okay, but then today something happened so that uh, my life looked to be like in the great um, danger or so that uh, like we are wondering why it came to me. So before also I had that kind of experiences, then I was really trying to find find a reason. And I was uh, also I was some finding some verses. Is it really possible to me? Is it happening? And then something like that. But then the Bible is teaching us that yeah, to the believers, uh, those difficulties are coming. Uh, it's not something strange. It's coming to our lives. So let us look at uh, Proverbs chapter 7, verse 14. Proverbs. Chapter 7, verse 14. Oh, I'm sorry, Ecclesiast. Ecclesiast. The next book. Chapter 7, verse 14. It says that in the day of Prosperity, be joyful, and in the day of adversity, consider. God has made uh, the one as well as the other, um, so that man may not find out anything that will be after him. Okay. So sometimes we feel uh, we have uh, the time of prosperity, some other days uh, we have the difficulties. So we don't know our future, right? So that is our life. Man does not have that ability. What will happen tomorrow, or even today? What will happen to me? So we don't know uh, about the future. Only God knows. But then um, we need to believe in God uh, at all the time, right? So let us read also. James chapter 5, verse 13. James chapter 5, verse 14. It is saying that, uh, verse 13, it says that, Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Okay. So, uh, even early churches, the members of early churches, there could be many people uh, who are suffering. So, some other people who has uh, maybe the joyful time. So. Uh, when we are in the suffering, then what should we do? We need to pray. Uh, it is the time we can go before God, we can come before God more closely, and then we can uh, honestly uh, seek God. Uh, then we can meet God um, at that time, through this uh, suffering time. So this can be also another chance for us to meet God. Okay? So when we are in the suffering, we should pray more. And then when we are in the joyful time, also we should not forget God. We should give thanks to God and sing praises so that we can uh, face any all the time and then we can overcome all the situations, uh, difficulties. Right? So Apostle Paul lived with uh, this um, uh, knowledge. In any time, any situation, I can do everything. 
So let us read Philippians chapter 4, verse 12. Chapter two, chapter four, uh, verse uh, Philippians chapter four, verse six. It says that do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Uh, and the peace of God, which is a surpasses, surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Um, and then verse 12 and 13, it says that, I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstances, circumstance, uh, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthened me. Yeah. Apostle Paul, he experienced uh, the hunger and also plenty, uh, all the persecutions, but then he could learn one, uh, one thing, that he could overcome everything uh, by him who strengthens him. So it's not that he did not experience any suffering, any hunger, any yeah, any disaster. But then in every situation, he could learn this one thing. I can do it. all things through him who strengthened me. Yeah. So when we are in the suffering, we need to come before God more. And then we can uh, be strengthened. Yeah. So, uh, I hope we can learn this uh, in our lives. Yeah. It can give us more uh, time to come before God. Yeah. So anyway, we can come back to our verse today, Mark chapter 4. Yeah. So Jesus, uh, he wanted to go over the, uh, the lake. Then verse 35, it says that uh, on that day when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. So the other side was um, the, the, uh, the place where the Gentiles were staying. Uh, the people who don't believe in God. Yeah. So con when we continue read then uh, chapter 5, it's talking about uh, how he met a person who was demon possessed. Yeah. So that place is that place, Gerasene, uh, it is the place of the Gentile land. So Jesus wanted to go to the Gentile land. After he was teaching many people uh, with parables about the kingdom of heaven, so Jesus wanted to go to the new land. He wanted to share this good news to the Gentiles also. He was not just staying at one place uh, and then just uh, satisfied. Uh, I taught the chosen people, but then he wanted to expand this kingdom of God to the other side. So we also need to uh, think that uh, the gospel is not for only us. We need to continually seek the people who are uh, not found yet. We need to preach them. Yeah. So Jesus wanted to go across the uh, lake. Yeah. So, um, and then when they were going uh, to mission, but then there was a big problem came to them, right? So it was great wind, uh, wind storm arose. So it was like, Almost the boat was almost sinking, and then the water entered in the boat and then filling. 
But then as Jesus was so tired after teaching and yeah, doing the mission there, then he was asleep, deep sleeping. Yeah. So he was very peacefully sleeping, even in that storm. But then the disciples, how are they? They were really embarrassed. They were really like uh, fearful. They were feared. So they were waking Jesus. Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? So they, they were thinking that we are perishing now. We are dying. So we are in the misery, we are dying. Teacher, Lord, you are not rescuing me, res rescuing us. So we can find the difference, right? Jesus was asleep deeply. But then uh, the disciples was they felt that we are dying. We are miserable. Uh, we are perishing. My life is ending. Even though they were with Jesus, but then they were their heart was not peaceful. They were shaken. But then Jesus was never shaken. He had a very big peace in him. So what is this difference? Yeah. The Bible says that it is the faith, right? Jesus was saying, oh, why are you so afraid? Verse 14, he said to them, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? Still, you don't have faith? Even though I taught you, oh, I showed you so many miracles and Oh, I was with you, but then you don't have faith. So what does Jesus want them to have is the faith. Right? If we don't have faith, then also we will be like this. Then Jesus will teach us like this. He will tell us, why are you afraid? Why are you shaken? Why do you don't, you don't have the peace? Every time you are shaking, you don't have faith. That is what Jesus would ask us. But then we can say, that, oh, you don't look at this wave. How do you see this wave? We can say, maybe if we don't have faith, then we will ask Jesus. You don't look at this situation. We are dying. I'm dying. This situation is too big. But then Jesus still will ask us, you need to believe, right? You need to believe in God. So let us look at uh, James, the book, of, the book of James chapter 1. James chapter 1, verse 5. He says that if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to, given him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Yeah. So uh, he is talking about if we are uh, we don't have faith, it's like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. So wind is the like the problem of or suffering difficulties. So when it comes, how is the water? It's going here and there, right? So if we are tossed here and there, it is because we are not having the faith. We are doubting. We don't believe that God is able. God is loving me. God can do everything. For me, God is listen, listening to my prayer. But then, because we don't hold God, we are looking at the wave. We are looking at the problems. Then, 
That kind of person cannot receive any answer from God. But then when we are praying, uh, believing in God, uh, then God will give us the peace, right? As the Philippians says, God will give us the peace. We can just request our, uh, we can pray with our request. Then God will reign our heart with peace. So, but then we should not have that doubt. Then we should not look at the other side. Uh, will God listen to me? Uh, does God love me? Uh, we should not have that kind of doubt yeah, because uh, it is on faith. Yeah. God cannot listen to the people who are not believing. Yeah. So the people of God, uh, they had this faith. Uh, even in the early churches, uh, when the first martyr, Stephen, when died, then how was his faith? He was just so peaceful, right? Even other people hated him and killed him. But then he did not, he was not shaken. But then he was very peaceful with absolute faith. And even he was praying for the people who are killing them, him. So maybe when Apostle Paul looked at him, that peace, that faith, then he could be shocked. Because he was not, he was never shaken by this wind, the great wind. But then he believed absolutely in Jesus. And then even he died. He was killed, but then he never shaken. So Jesus is asking, why are you, why you don't have faith? Even when the death comes, you should believe. It cannot cut off the love, love of God toward you through Jesus Christ. There is nothing which can separate you from the love of God. So you should believe in this love of God. You should believe that God is holding you. With what are you shaken? Maybe when we are looking at ourselves, there can be something which is really shaking us, right? Maybe it can be the problems or lack of money or maybe hatred of the people. Then when it comes, then it's like giving us the shock. And then we start to be irritated and then we are stirred and then we are, uh, we are not peaceful. But then at that time, let us remember this verse. Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? Why are you fearful? Why are you uh, shaken? You don't have faith. So let us um, read verse 39, uh, Mark chapter 5, 39. It says that, And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. So what we look at here, um, we can find that Jesus was not only have the peace in mind, right? But then he had that power to uh, make the wind and a wave be calm down. This is great power and authority of the Son of God. So uh, Jesus had this. Yeah. He had that peace which never been shaken. And also he had the power to calm down that wave and wind. And then he's asking also the disciples, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? So what does Jesus request from the disciples? I think that it's not just the peace in mind, right? Uh, he doesn't want the disciples to be just peaceful, uh, just uh, just all in this kind of uh, uh, situations and just enduring with peace, not just peace in the mind. 
But then he wanted also to overcome this storm and the wave with faith. When Jesus was making this uh, miracle, and then he also gave this authority and power to the disciples. He gave this authority to the disciples. Uh, let us read Mark chapter 16, verse 15 to 18. Mark chapter 16, verse 15 to 18. And he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And be whoever, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on, their, on the sick and they will recover. Amen. That is the great authority uh, which Jesus gave to the disciples. Yeah. So uh, through, through this authority, with this authority, the people in the early churches, they really uh, experienced this great uh, authority uh, and miracle was happening. Uh, Apostle Paul, he also overcame the poison when he was also bitten by the, the poison, poisonous snake, right? And there were so many miracles, healing and raising the dead body, yeah, we can see what happened. It's not just uh, also, we should not just read this as a uh, long time ago story, the early churches, but it's given to all the believers. So God gave us this authority. God gave us the authority of the sons. You are the sons, like Jesus. Through Jesus, his death and resurrection, and then whoever believe in Jesus, we are given the right to be the children of God. So we have that right and authority. So when we believe in this, then also we can overcome all the, uh, the problems and also power of the world, the evil powers of the world. So I hope we can uh, meditate this uh, today's message, and then um, we can have we can set up the faith. Uh, always we can look at uh, Jesus, and then also we can see what great authority we were given, and then uh, with that, then we can overcome in the name of Jesus. We can pray in the name of Jesus. Uh, in the name of Jesus, the power of God will be given to us so that we can open the new world through our faith. So let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. Thank you for your word. Lord, uh, Jesus overcame uh, the great um, storm and wind with faith. So you are always uh, with us and you are our Father and you are given us this great right and authority in our lives. So uh, no other power can overcome us, but we are the victors. We want to know uh, this and we want to uh, use it. Uh, so in, in all the situation, all the uh, difficult situations and circumstances, uh, we don't want to look at that uh, as it is, but then we want to believe in you. And with, with our faith, we want to uh, go forward uh, and overcome everything. Uh, Lord, please give us this uh, faith and uh, so that we can uh, 
uh, we can overcome all the difficulties and uh, we can experience you greatly in our lives. Uh, so please be with us and guide us our lives. Thank you in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.